opened my eyes like at five in the morning. I said, oh my God, I am going to manage in the big leagues for the Toronto Blue Jays. That's when it really hit me. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Nah, man, I'm fired up, yeah. man. I'm very excited. Very excited. It is after midnight. A local hero is returning home, and his friends and family have organized a little surprise for him. When he takes the field with the Toronto Blue Jays on opening day, Charlie Montoyo will become just the third Puerto Rican-born manager in Major League history. Yes, Charlie Montoyo is a big league skipper now, but he is also their Nino de Oro, their golden child. Fifteen years old. Este fue otro año más jugando con los titanes de Florida. Que de ahí en adelante fue que le dijeron el niño de oro porque lo que estaba era bateando hit, doble, home run. Double A baseball in Puerto Rico is the game at its most pure. A summer long tournament that pits town against town for national bragging rights. People talk about the Negro Leagues. You go to church and then you go to watch baseball. It, it's kind of like the same thing. It's a culture event. It was packed. You know, when I say packed, you, you could, you know, whatever, 800 fans, whatever that is, it takes to pack this place, but it, it was a lot of fun. Even the tiniest hamlets feel the team. Florida is the smallest of the small. But in 1982, Los Titanes beat the odds and won their first and only championship. He was a town hero. I mean, when they won the whole thing from Puerto Rico, I mean, the whole town was upside down. I can tell you that right now. It was, it was awesome. One of the best moments in my career, to tell you the truth. That's how much I love this town and, and how great that was. Outside the boundaries of Florida, few noticed. But in his hometown, Charlie Montoyo became a legend. And so when he returned this past December as the new manager of the Toronto Blue Jays, there were two reasons to celebrate, past and present. It turned into quite a party. It doesn't surprise me that he has this welcome hero, you know, this parade. Probably it was more about the 82 team than actually being the manager of the Jays. This is a perfect way to put it. When strangers come up to you and they tell you how proud they are, they don't even know you. Like, I'm proud of you, thank you for what you've done. It's life changing. There's nothing better than your hometown to, to, to feel that way. It's, it's one of the greatest feelings that you could ever have. In high school, Montoya was identified as a potential professional ball player, but also as someone who could succeed in higher education. Speaking not a word of English, he left Florida for De Anza College in Cupertino, California. I didn't speak any English. So that they put people in an American family who spoke no Spanish, which is great. That's one good way to learn a language. 
I remember the first day there, I was starving. I didn't know what to say, so I, I started walking. I got lost. Three hours later, they, they found me. <laughs> After a year in California, Montoyo moved on to Louisiana Tech University, where he was a three-year starter and earned a place in the school's Hall of Fame. Just when I thought I was learning the language, then I went to Louisiana. And that's a different language over there. So I remember people saying, I'm fixing to go, and you're fixing what? No, he was leaving. And where? Oh, you're leaving. All right. So little stuff like that. In 1987, Montoya was drafted by the Milwaukee Brewers. Six years later, he was playing in the Montreal Expos minor league system when the fateful call came, right out of the blue. I was playing for the Ottawa Lynx, which I love that place. And then, you know, I had a pretty good year. So here comes the first game of the playoffs, and all of a sudden I'm not in the lineup. Mike Quaddy, who was the manager then, calls and he goes, well, you're going to go play for the Expos. I got there at 7 o'clock, 7, 10 game. Then I sat in the dugout like until the bottom of the eighth, when the bench coach goes and tells me, if they bring the left, you're going to pinch it. And I got a base hit, my first at bat, to take the lead. And that was my first game. That was it, the sum total of Charlie Montoyo's major league playing career. Five at-bats over four games, two hits, a run scored, and a career average forever fixed at 400. The Expos sent him back down to the minors, and he never returned to the bigs. Montoyo saw the end of the line coming and started to look at other ways to stay in the game. I remember it was 1996. I happened to see Tom Foley, who, who was a fan director back then with the Devil Rays. And I said, hey, I'm thinking about coaching next year, so think of me you know, if you're looking for a coach. It was a sincere conversation that we had that he wanted to do this. This is something he wanted to do, uh, wanted to make a career out of it. And when we got him aboard, there was no doubt we made the right decision. There's a Charlie Montoya somewhere in, in Florida right now. You know, a kid that is growing up to, to, to play baseball and for X or Y reason, he's not gonna make it to the big leagues, but there's a way to make it to the big leagues. And, and he's a perfect example of that. They are two worlds apart. The twin spheres of Charlie Montoyo's life couldn't be more different. And here, the idea of a golden child has an entirely different meaning. Going through all this stuff with Alex is, makes you a better man and a better manager because now, you know, bases loaded, two outs, it's, it's okay, it could be worse. It's weird because obviously being a manager is his job, but that's not who he is. Like when he comes home, he is full on dad. He is, he takes them to school, he picks them up from school, he drives to practice. Anything they need or anything they want to do, he, he's up for it. He loves me, he supports everything I do. He's, he thinks I'm the greatest person in the world. That's all he can really ask for, for a parent. For a dad, I'm not, I'm not the only one that thinks this way, I'm sure, but you know, Whenever you have kids, they become your life, and they're my life, so everything I do, it's for them. Charlie Montoyo met Samantha Start in Charleston, South Carolina, where he was managing the Class A River Dogs, and she was the team's promotion director. Well, it was in my mind when I went, when I knew I was gonna go back to Charleston, I said, well, I like that girl over there. And I started yeah, looking at her, and then she noticed me, like, okay, this guy's looking at me a different way now. And he came up with some cheesy stuff. So I don't play baseball at all. I don't play softball. I'm afraid of the ball. And I made some comment like, you know, will you help me? And he was made some sassy comment, you know, yeah, well, if you wear that skirt or, you know, whatever. I did. That's really <laughs> <laughs> they were married in 2001 and settled in Tucson, where Samantha had gone to university. Their first son, Tyson, was born in 2002. Alex arrived on October 17th, 2007, his father's birthday. But Charlie missed the delivery. I couldn't stay, I'm, you know, I, 
It's when too I much for me to watch. When I had Tyson, he hit the ground, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> during the epidural, not even during the baby, during the epidural. <laughs> so um, my mother was there and I... So I took Tyson to McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> I got back and then the baby's there, you know, and, and everything was fine. All of a sudden they, they took him. I'm watching these numbers, and the only one I understood was the O2, that's oxygen, hit like 2%, zero. I'm like, that's not fine. We went to see him, and, mm -hmm. and the oxygen wasn't good. It wasn't good. Like, we didn't think he was going to make it. Alex was diagnosed with Epstein's anomaly, a rare congenital heart abnormality. His case was especially severe. His first of many surgeries took place at the Phoenix Children's Hospital. After the first surgery, everybody was really positive, and then they got less positive. Because he had the surgery, two days later he came off the ventilator. Five hours later, he was back on the ventilator. Everything changed for the Montoyo family with Alex's diagnosis. Their lives became a blur of long hospital stays, multiple surgeries, medical and living expense worries, shifting diagnoses, and many close calls. For a time, it looked like a heart transplant was Alex's best option. That meant moving him and moving the family to the UCLA Medical Center in Los Angeles. I didn't understand transplant. I didn't, un I, I thought you got a transplant it and that was it. Not I didn't sure. understand you need one like every 10 to 12 years. And, you, and I don't know, I, I can't tell you how horrible it is to sit in a hospital and know that you have a one month old on that bed. How do you get a transplant? You know, I, your good fortune is someone else's tragedy. Eventually, Charlie had to go back to work. Bills had to be paid, medical insurance had to be maintained. But his job was on the other side of the continent. So I would fly home every day off, which is probably once a month. I would leave like six in the morning from Durham, wherever I was, and get here like nine, 10 in the morning and, and spend the whole day and leave the next day at five in the morning so I can make it to the game there the next day so I can see him. I was a player for him when he was going through a lot of that stuff and I said, looking back on it, man, he, he's a lot, Charlie's a lot stronger man than I am because I, I couldn't have done what he did. And I, you know, just having conversations behind closed doors, I know how hard it was for him. When you get ill into it, it, it can it can put tears in anybody's eyes. Um, and to know Charlie at that level and how hard it was for him to to do what he did as a manager, be away from his family at some extremely tough times. To know how soft his heart is, it's um it's special. I know. You're doing great, buddy. Keep it up. What's it like hearing your story being told? It's weird. And when I hear it, I, I just want to leave. <laughs> because I don't want to listen to it again. Because it's sad. And, and I just listen every time what I've been through. Alex, you know, I, I could sit here and do a whole new interview about him. You just talk about a kid who just lights up a room. Uh, I'm going to miss him just as much as I miss Charlie. Seven, ten. eight, there we go. I got ten. There we go. All right, I'm hitting a homer now, for sure. Handshake. Alex didn't have a transplant, though it remains an option down the road. His condition has stabilized, but he battles through complications brought about by his failing heart and the multiple surgeries. His health is never going to be simple, but in the ways that matter most, 
he's like any other baseball loving kid. Man, can you throw strikes now? Ooh, that's a bomb. Ooh. There you go. <laughs> In 2014, Charlie Montoyo moved to the major leagues as a third base coach with the Tampa Bay Rays. During the months they spent apart every baseball season, he found a unique way to stay in touch with his youngest son. Alex is a big uh, baseball fan, so from the beginning when I got my, my job in the big leagues, uh, I, I took video at every ballpark that I went to and I sent it to Alex, you know, explaining this is the Atlanta Braves ballpark, this is the Miami Marlins ballpark, and, and uh, I think I got a couple left, so I'll be doing two more this year. And there it is. It's a big play. So I would, uh, I would have known I was going to manage there four years ago. In half of a mile, your destination is ahead on the left. Every day, at one time during the day, I got that, oh my God, feeling that, oh my God, I'm a big, big manager. Over the course of his career, as an enormously successful minor league manager, and as a widely respected coach with the Rays, a host of big league managerial jobs opened and were filled. Montoyo's name was never called. I was just trying to do the best job I could do at where I was. I was trying to be the best AAA manager I could be, not thinking of, of anything ahead. Sometimes trends in the game uh, seem to take over, where people start looking for a different profile, and they overlook the person. Following the 2018 season, the familiar pattern seemed to be repeating itself. Managers were fired, new managers were hired. Right. Charlie Montoya was 53 years old, and it seemed likely his window had closed. Then, in Tucson, the phone rang. Ross calls, Ross Atkins, and says, I know it's kind of late and late in the process, but we, we really want to talk to you because your name keeps coming up. As you go through that process, there's people that continue to rise, and then there's individuals that slide. And as we continue to ask questions, Charlie just continued to, to rise in every possible way. We, the more we learned, the better he got. After a long day of interviews, Ross Atkins and Mark Shapiro invited Charlie to dinner in Toronto. It was his last chance to make an impression, and he did what he could to make the most of it. At some point, that dinner started to drag um, because even though the restaurant was largely empty, the waiter was, was really, he was inattentive to our table. I think Charlie could pick up on the fact that the two of us were, heads were on a swivels, looking for that waiter to come by, looking for someone to come and say, would you like a glass of water? Can we get you something to eat? I think we, it was one of those unspoken things. We didn't talk about it. At some point, I acknowledged, I just call it out. Like, this is ridiculous. This guy, we can't get this guy back here. Charlie said, hey guys, I asked for a few extra minutes. I slid him $20 because I, I, I wanted some more time with you guys. And we both immediately relaxed. We all three belly laughed and it set the tone for the rest of our dinner. That waiter took forever and that was beautiful because I got to know them better. And the more I talked to them, I said, man, it'd be great to work with these people. They're just great people, great baseball people. Just a day and a half after their dinner in Toronto, Ross Atkins called Montoyo and offered him the job. I had a big smile on my face and I could, I could feel his genuine uh, excitement. I do remember thinking that there was some mild distraction. I was gonna go tell my wife and I see her jumping around and say, what's going on? There was a rattlesnake. <laughs> True story, he was pretty big, but he was dead. <laughs> but still, I don't know if he was dead or not, I was throwing rocks at it. <laughs> so half hour later, she finds out that I got the job. I was excited and I was super happy he got it because I can go to the to Rogers Center and and like and go to to my first country. Cuando Charlie nos llamó para decirnos 
que él había sido escogido para ser el, el dirigente, mi esposo y yo nos abrazamos, lloramos, y decimos, Charlie, ¿qué? ¿Qué? I remember I was sitting in my desk in my work. He calls me up, hey, you know who's the next manager of the Jays? I am. Oh man, that was that was crazy. That was awesome. Great for him. I'm very proud of my brother. I'd like to welcome Charlie Montoya as the 13th manager of the Toronto Blue Jays and I couldn't be more proud in doing so. You have no idea how thankful I am for this opportunity and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best guys to make you proud. Hey Papa! <laughs> I just want to congratulate Charlie. Hey, you are in a great organization uh, with great people behind you. So I uh, wish you all the best and uh, you know keep us. Uh, we just want to win. So, <laughs> me too. Me too. Little operation. <laughs> You never want to lose somebody that uh, means so much to you personally and that has meant so much to this organization. But my goodness, you know, to see Charlie get that opportunity as a major league manager, uh, he earned every bit of this. I always told Charlie he was a good guy, but uh, now, I, now I'll open up a little bit. Charlie's a great guy. Uh, I'll let him know it now. Not only does he deserve it, I was happy for the organization. You know, what they're getting, knowing, knowing Charlie and knowing what the organization was getting, knowing what these players were getting, I was, uh, I was pumped. I did one of those, like, so happy for him. Those guys over there, they're, they're probably starting to figure out right now, but little do they know what they have in store for them with such a great individual running things over there. And uh, he's going to do great. I, I know that. Knowing him and, and knowing the things that he went through, not only on the field, but as a family, I, I'm very proud of him. It's a great feeling knowing that I'm really working for great people. And I'm also representing a country, which is special, because that's what we do here in Puerto Rico. Because I play in Ottawa, I play in Montreal, and, and now I'm going to manage the, the Blue Jays. I'm Alex Montoyo. This is take one. Yeah, Tyson go. interview, take one. Mom interview, take one. Dad interview, take one. Nice. 